Hey everyone, this is my series on optimization problems and this is my first example where we're going to look at the maximum volume of a box that we're going to create. As a reminder, the way that these videos work, you want to pause and try parts of the example when you are prompted to do so. It just makes you a little more active and makes the video more meaningful. And if you'd like to see printouts, there's always free guided notes available at DividingConquerMath.com. And hey, while you're here, if maybe you'd consider giving my video a like or subscribing to my channel or leaving me a comment, that would really be doing me a solid. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm just going to show you the problem. A piece of sheet metal is rectangular, three foot wide by six foot long, and congruent squares are to be cut from its four corners. The resulting piece of metal is to be folded and welded to form an open top box. How should this be done to get maximum volume? Okay, so the way that you want to work with optimization problems in general, it's usually in your best interest to draw a picture first. So what I want you to do is test your own intuition here and draw this situation and label as much of the picture as possible. Hit play when you're ready. Okay, so I've got this piece of sheet metal. So here's my piece of sheet metal. And so I know that this is six feet, this is three feet, and then it's telling me that I'm gonna cut squares from the sides like this. So I don't know how big those squares are, but this is kind of just the idea. So I'm cutting these squares, and these are each of, um, length and width x, right? So now what I have to do is I have to kind of think about the new size of this, even though this whole side is three feet, these little x's are actually going to change everything, right? So what would just this length here be now? Well, this length will be three minus two x, right? So it's whatever the, the lengths of these squares are. And then here, this will now be six minus two x. So we want to keep that in mind because then what we're supposed to do with this is we're going to fold this all up. So let's see if I can maybe just do this over here. Always a moment of truth to have to draw. I hate probably drawing the most. It's like the worst part about having to be a math teacher because it's just, I don't know, I get like really nervous. So just keep in mind, be, Go, go go easy on me here. I get really nervous when I have to draw. I can do math equations all day. Okay, that's not bad, right? I did pretty good. Okay, so here's the box. So you're gonna like basically cut these things out and then you're gonna fold it up and it's gonna look like this. So this is your height of x and then this is your three minus two x and then this is your six minus two x. So hopefully you can see all that. Okay, so we have to first just know what the situation actually looks like. And what we're trying to figure out here is what, how should we cut these little squares to get the maximum volume? So maximum volume, all optimization problems are either going to be talking about maximizing or minimizing. And maximizing and minimizing, that should really remind you of taking a derivative and setting it equal to zero. So you can kind of see the way that we're going to go with this. So first things first, we drew the picture. So now what I want you to do is I want you to write out what is the full equation of the volume of this. So you know how to calculate the volume of this. So work all of that out and then hit play when you're ready to check. Okay, so for me to get to my volume, so that's the height times the length times the width. So that's gonna be x times six minus two x and then three minus two x. So I have to multiply all that together and I'll just tell you what it comes out to. So hopefully you already worked this out and, and proved this to yourself. So this is gonna be four X cubed minus 18 X squared plus 18 X. And then um, now what we have to do right is now that we've got the equation, we are looking to now maximize it. So again, what does it mean to maximize then? Well, then that means that we're gonna to have to take a derivative. It's calculus, you're you, in general in calculus, a lot of times probably taking a derivative of something, right? So if I take the derivative, I get 12x squared minus 36x plus 18. And so now I want to set this equal to zero. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do that. So I've got my 12x squared minus 36x plus 18 equals zero. And let's see, I could totally factor a six out of this. And then sadness when you factor out the six, this can't be factored any farther. So you're totally gonna have to use the quadratic formula for this. So, okay. So here's where I'm at right now. So I have to figure out what my zeros of this are. 
So why don't why don't I clear some space just so and I'll just have this equation kind of sitting out there so we can keep going. Okay, so I just gave myself a little bit more space. I, I still really need all of these equations, so I'm just going to leave them here. So quadratic formula. Um, so maybe you want to pause the video and just go ahead and find your, your zeros yourself and then hit play when you want to check. Okay, so for the quadratic formula, so my a is 2, my b is negative 6, and my c is 3. So now if I just plug all of this in, so I get 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared minus 4 times 2 times 3, all of this divided by 4. And then in the interest of time, so I'm just going to tell you what that, that comes out to. So this is this will be 6 plus or minus the square root of 12 divided by 4. And then if you want to find just the, the decimal answers for this, so you get x equals 2.366 or x equals 0 0.634. So they're not, not beautiful, but but that's okay. <laughs> okay, so now, now we really got to think about this actually. So you, like, be careful when you're plowing through this because the thing with optimization problems is you really actually have to think about the situation. And so one thing that I, I didn't do, which maybe I should have at the beginning, but at, at some point you have to think about this in the problem. And, and definitely by this point, you need to know this. So with these real world situations, you have to think about the domain. So in general, if I just gave you this, the domain would be all real numbers, but that doesn't make sense in the context of our problem. So if I go back to my box and I just think about this for a second. So X, if this is square, X cannot be more than half of the shortest side, right? So the, the largest box, so this is totally ridiculous, but I just want to kind of draw it. So the largest X I could have would be right here. And so this is, this would be 1.5. So half of the three feet. So X is actually restricted kind of by just these, these dimensions. So one thing I just want to note here then, so my domain in this situation is between zero and 1.5. X has to be between those two things. And that's something just you have to consider just based on the information that you have and, and just kind of thinking through it. And benefit, this is a closed domain so that will make our lives easier because now instead of me having to say, oh, now I have to do, you know, the first derivative test and figure out all my intervals and this and the other thing, since it's a closed domain, we know what we have to do for this, right? Um, we have to just test the two endpoints and then any critical points. Now also in looking at this, since this is the domain, so even though these were my two critical points, I know that this one here, this one doesn't work because it's it's bigger than 1.5. But I am going to just show you what happens if you, if you were to consider this. So now what I want to do is I want to just evaluate kind of all, all these points. So first of all, if I just evaluate V of 0 or V of 1.5, so if you plug either one of these back into just the, the factored form, this is going to equal 0. So obviously the endpoints can't be the, the maximum in this case. So more than likely, the maximum will be this little point here. So if I plug this 0 0.634, so you might want to pause and just actually do that for yourself and, and prove to yourself what this is. If I plug this in, I get 5.196. And so then because this is a closed interval, all I have to do is test the endpoints and the critical point. And this is going to be my maximum. You can just see that. So now we've really got the solution. Now, one other thing I just want to mention here, um, what if you didn't think about the domain? What if you were just plowing ahead with this and you actually plugged in 2.366? So you would actually, in, in this case, you would get lucky and you would know that that doesn't make any sense because check out what you would get. You would get a negative volume. So this doesn't make any sense. Sometimes this happens, sometimes this doesn't, but you know, thankfully um, in this case, this, this just doesn't work. So we can just say, yep, that didn't make sense. And then you might think about it and say, oh, right. Cause the domain has got to be, you know, restricted or whatever. So you, you can, you've also got kind of that little hint in there for you. So just to summarize now, the squares should have a length of 0.634 feet to maximize the volume. 
and that will cover this particular video. So I have several other videos on optimizing. So, you know, if you are looking for other examples, please check those out. Thanks for watching.